Hello, comrades! Welcome back to Workers and Resources, Soviet Republic. My name, of course, is Orbital Potato. Uh, that's right, we're back. Thank you to everyone who posted Orbital Delivers down in the comments at the end of the last video. Very, very much appreciated, because, in fact, Orbital does indeed always deliver. Um, anyway, this is just a quick little announcement uh, to let you know that, as far as I'm aware, the nuclear patch is now available in the stable branch, so if you've got the game, if you haven't explored the test branch yet, well then, now you don't have to, you, the game is gonna, the game is gonna update for you, and uh, you'll be able to get all of this juicy nuclear goodness uh, coming your way. So this is the first, this is the first episode that we're gonna be actually playing on the stable branch, which is really, really cool indeed. Now, uh, we left the last episode off, and I basically just said, you know, there's a couple of little power things that I need to do uh, over in this vicinity, in the case of uh, in the case of Oil Island and Oil Novsky. So what I've basically done is, well, I've made a couple of slight amendments. I've uh, I've run a high voltage power cable all the way across here, uh, over to the construction area. I've stuck in a modded transformer, which has got a high power, high voltage throughput. Uh, and what I'm about to do, actually, is just connect up all of the little, uh, the little wires over here to all of the various different uh, pumping stations. Probably not necessarily wires connected up and whatnot, but uh, but certainly, uh, but certainly we need to make sure that this entire area is powered, and that's all uh, that's all got power. The other system that I've set up is another. Uh, transformer on the the main oil island itself and then dotted throughout the island I've set up the transformers I don't think I bought the transformers but I bought all of the wires uh, across to the transformers so it's literally just a case of buying the transformers whenever we want to sort of switch this thing on and I think that that is exactly what I'm going to do now you might be saying you might be saying if you're an astute observer of uh, of this video game then you might be saying, well, Orbital, what the, what the heck are you doing? What the heck are you doing starting the episode before you've even finished doing all of the, the wiring? What is this? Why am I being, why am I being forced to watch such unprofessional content that clearly hasn't been prepared and you clearly haven't done the work that you need to do and yada, yada, yada. I get it. All fair criticism. Completely fair criticism, right? Is that all of the, is that all of the substations? I think that's all of the substations. Well, the reason is, the reason is, the reason is mostly thanks to one event which I saw pop up in the corner of my screen uh, very, very, very near the end of, uh, of all of my construction works. That's right, there's a fire at the Mount Ivan Iron Mine. Now, if you'll recall, we have two iron mines. One which has caught fire, what, four times? Three times? Certainly, certainly at least two times, that's for sure. Uh, and we've got two fantastic memorials to remember all of the people who died. Uh, in that iron mine at the time. That's the Mineski iron mine. But now, goodness gracious me, as if the game just hadn't had enough of setting iron mines on fire, turns out that the Mount, the Mount Ivan iron mine is, uh, is also on fire. So I thought, you know what, as a first port of call today, we're going to try our very best to try and figure this, uh, this nonsense out. We're going to see what we can do. Right, so the first thing that I should do is absolutely get all of these roads connected over here. I think the best way to go about solving this problem is with a bridge. But the only problem is, I'm really not entirely sure how steep we're allowed to make the bridges. Also, let me build a prefab bridge. We'll try and keep costs to an absolute minimum. Looks like I can set off from here. I mean, that, to be honest, seems like a pretty perfect... That seems like a pretty perfect set up, to be honest. Okay, now, how how quickly can we descend? Some other infrastructure is in the way. What other infrastructure is in the way? Pray tell. I mean, oh no. Angle of connection is too sharp. This is going to cost an absolute fortune. How far are we going to have to come across? Oh, goodness gracious me. The thing is, is that the steeper the descent, the less likely it is to actually work. I mean, what if I was to try and bridge over from this side here and just go at the maximum level of steepness? Oh, boy. I mean, what about bridging over from somewhere slightly higher? Hill causing obstruction? Yeah, I understand that. Something like this. I mean, that's, 
not out of the question. Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. I think I might have... I think I might have bitten off more than I can chew. This is, this is terribly worrying. Terribly, terribly worrying. And we, we might even be able to, like, descend a little bit over here. You know, there's a little bit of terrain modification that can definitely be done. I don't think much terrain modification can be done, though, unfortunately. I mean, that looks good. If we could try and encourage that sort of behavior, that would be brilliant. I mean, even if we're able to create, like, a winding, sneaky road all the way to get up to the top, that would be very, very much appreciated. It's just this initial descent that really scares me, though. You need a free excavator or construction office? That's too far away? Really? I mean, that is highly surprising to me, to be honest. Okay, well, you know what? We've got we to gotta give it a shot, right? I, I know I'm sort of bleeding rubles at the moment, but what can be done? I, I cannot have I cannot have the reputation as the guy who lets his iron mines catch fire and burn down each and every time. Because it's it's scaring me that that is actually an eventuality that is gonna that is gonna occur, and I'm not happy about it. I mean, there's not even a not even another slope that we could end up realistically using. I mean. I think we just have to use hills causing obstruction. We have to use a bridge. We have to, have to, have to use a bridge. Yeah, but you see, even that, I mean, that's like the maximum height that we can realistically... It's just so, so darn steep. Not to mention the fact that the bridge is going to end up being absolutely gargantuan and is going to cost an absolute fortune. I think we have to just try and... I think we have to try and wind our way up. I think we have to try and wind our way up. I think we were onto a bit of a winner there, actually, when it came to... when it came to this idea. So this idea of having, like, a... like a little bit of a windy road over here, I think this might be... this might be where we try and... might be where we try and explore a little bit further. But then again, oh goodness gracious me, the uh, the terrain modification over here is so darn bad. Unless there is a way to see if we can try and curve this around over here. I mean, we're not out of options. Oh, I just dislike. I just dislike it so much. Right. So what about? I'm really, I'm really trying to see what we can do here. So something like that. Is that allowed? That is, a I'm astounded. I'm absolutely astounded. I'm astounded how that is allowed to consider that as a possible route. Okay, let me just take a little average over here just to see if we can try and clean things up. There's always this route around here, which I also like as a, as a potential route, like coming around the back of this, of this facility here. Oh, it's grim, though. It's grim. It's really, really, really grim. I think maybe, honestly, like coming around the back is, is not a terrible idea. Can I try and get this a little bit more focused? Yeah, also, I think we need to get another construction office. Look, I'm determined. I'm absolutely determined, folks, not to let this happen. Uh, anyway, yeah, so this is the this is the first episode of the nuclear patch. There we go. I don't know if it increases the uh, the frequency of fires. I don't think it does, but I'm just looking for... I'm looking for a reason to complain, to be honest. I'm looking for a, a bleeding reason to complain, because I'm unbelievably irritated that, yet again, I've ended up in this situation. Oh, we can't even unpause. I don't even want to unpause because if I unpause, then that's going to spread the fire. We got to... Oh my goodness, we got to play it so careful. We got to play it so, so unbelievably careful. Okay. I know that I'm using rubles in order to accomplish this. Is there another option? Well, yes, dollars. There's very, very much another option. Too steep of an incline. Honestly, if I could just get that, if I could just get that locked in, 
I mean, whatever the case, if this actually works, if we're actually able to, you know, sort of mission accomplished this setup over here through hook or crook or whatever, then we're going to end up with a fantastic story, you know? You better be ready to tell your grandkids that where were, where were you the moment that Orbital Potato solved a mine crisis? The descent is just too darn steep. Tell you what, though. That ain't half bad. That ain't half bad at all. It's it's risky, but I kind of dig it. Okay, what about what about a similar sort of bridge setup over here? If it is wooden bridge, probably won't be too expensive to do. Now, unbelievably, that is slightly too steep. But that is... It's also quite steep. It's not far off the steepness limit, though, I don't think. If we start from a higher vantage point, will that give us any better luck? By the way, I'm kind of hoping that the fire station down here is going to be able to reach. Again, probably a wholly ambitious objective. I'm also going to take this back because I've just now realized that we're absolutely going to have to use bridge that allows trucks to travel faster. Right, so that dent over there, cool. It's got a little bit of dirt roads. You're not keen on that, are you? You're not keen on that at all, video game. Okay, well that's cool, let's try again. Let's do a average terrain height. Doesn't even need to necessarily be a height from center, it just needs to be average. Yeah, and to think that I had hopes and dreams over the course of this episode to actually do some uh, some funky stuff. Uh, speaking of some funky stuff, there is a couple of, I guess, like delivery routes that we still need to do, but I'm not super bothered about getting them done right at this moment in time. No, not at all. My priority is 100% this flipping situation here. Okay, now do high from center. There we go. Get a nice, even plinth on which we can build. Yep. And my unnecessary road vehicles depot is not going to be constructed because we can't unpause. That's looking pretty darn good. Nice. Go back to prefabricated bridges. Angle of connection is too sharp. In what direction? Pray tell. So I think it's around about here that we want to get it. And is it too... Is it too steep a descent? I think it might be too steep of a descent. Even if I pump the max height of the bridge? Oh my... Okay. <laughs> that will work. That will work. Unbelievably, that will work. Does that solve any of our problems? Actually, it might solve a couple of them. Okay, what's the... What's the maximum downwards trajectory I can travel with this. Okay, let's try and roughly measure it out. Okay, I'm trying to use the hill. I'm trying to use the hill here in order to try and get the, the height of the bridge down. But it turns out it's actually quite a challenge. Yes, okay, good. Good. Oh, we are so painfully close. In a mix between the angle of connection being too sharp and also... Oh, boy. We can definitely do this. We've got it. We're going to do it. We're going to do it. That's the height. That's the height that we want right there. Oh, my goodness. It actually works. How much is this going to cost me? How much, how much is this going to cost me? And how long is it going to take to build? Now, bridges build much quicker than tunnels. That's a little fun fact for you there. Bridges build a heck of a lot quicker than tunnels. So, you remember last time we tried to build a... We tried to build a stupid tunnel through a stupid mountain? Yeah, I'm still bitter about that whole setup there. But this is the time. This is the time when things are going to work. It does worry me that the fire station is literally round at the other side. Is there any way that I can get, like, an express route between the fire station and this brand new crazy bridge that I've just built? I suspect that the answer to that is strongly no, as I've not given myself much breathing room here in terms of getting a road up this hill. 
maybe, just maybe, I'll be able to terraform a little bit. We don't need to terraform with cash down here. We can, uh, we can survive with, uh, with just using our local construction depots. Am I using, I'm using asphalt. I don't need asphalt for this. Too steep for an incline? It's a little steep for an incline. Also, I'm proud of myself. I haven't actually used the wireframe here. Not yet, anyway. So that's quite good news. Right, try again. Too steep for an incline. Ah, yep, yeah, but it worked, didn't it? It worked. Okay. I actually think, legitimately, this is a great option. Again, just a little bit more work here, and we'll we'll be there. There we go. Get that lowered down a little bit. I saw something work there. There we go. That's what we like to see. That is exactly what we like to see. Okay. This could very well bankrupt me. This could very well bankrupt me, but to be honest, there are nobler causes. Also, does this make this the longest continuous straight bridge that we have in the game? I really don't know why this is such a thing. I don't, I don't, I don't know why I need to do this. I don't know why I need to do this. All right, let's see how quickly my cash drops. All right, let's go for it. Are we building it? We're building it. Oh my goodness, it's ridiculously slow. I suppose it is like the large, it's such a big section of bridge. Oh no, don't tell me that I'm gonna end up spending all of this money and then it's just not gonna end up working out. Right, hold on, maybe I cancel this bridge. Maybe I straight up just get rid of the bridge and then try again and do it in different parts. I'm gonna take a risk here. Right, so ditch the bridge, ditch the bridge. I think we have to, we have to be bold. We have to be bold if we actually want to solve our, solve our problem. Okay, so, max height, right? Is that actually an increase? That's a height increase. Okay, that's, that's a little bit much. We don't need, we don't need a height increase. Right, so something like that. does say that it's going to connect up, shockingly. Oh, it's not going to work, is it? Oh, you... You dastardly, dastardly game. You've suckered me in with the possibility of being able to build a nice bridge. And yet, here we are. It's not gonna work, is it? It's not gonna work. It's oh, brutal, utterly brutal. We build a brick bridge instead. Is that gonna build any quicker? Twenty-one thousand work days. Twenty-one thousand work days. Oh boy. All right. You know what? Just build the prefab bridge. Just, just build the prefab bridge. That's what we need. It's gonna literally gonna wipe us out. But I, I, I don't think we have any choice. Tell you what, cancel and then build with dollars, eh? Actually, no, screw it. Build with the rubles. Right, so we've just wasted a little bit of production time. I know, I know, I know. I think the prefab bridge is maybe the best option for us. It's not looking likely that this fire is going to get extinguished. It's not looking very likely at all. In fact, dare I say, it's maybe looking less likely than ever. I still cannot, I still cannot believe that I've actually built a bridge that literally spans the entirety of the Mount Ivan Valley. Okay, I mean, this is just, at this point, it's, it's just folly. There is, there is no way, I'm so irritated. I'm, I'm gonna lose yet another iron mine to a fire. I, uh, I, <laughs> I'm actually pretty tilted, to be honest. I'm actually pretty darn tilted. I, <laughs> I am, I, <laughs> I, uh, is there a lesson to be learned here? Is there actually legitimately a lesson to be learned? Is the lesson, you always need to make sure that you've got a road connection up to the iron mines? I mean, I feel like that is such a garbage lesson to learn. It really is. Look at that. We're about to, oh my God, we're about to spend thousands and thousands of rubles. Only seven citizens killed, though. 
Oh, it's the most irritating, the most irritating thing in the entire known universe. Oh my goodness, I genuinely very, very irritated at this moment in time. Uh, so that's going to cost me another 2,000, 2,000 rubles to, uh, to set that one back up. Um, again, I find myself asking, is there, is there something that I can learn? Is there something that I can learn here? The answer I feel is kind of no. I feel like, I feel like I, I feel like no. Like what have, what have I, what the heck have I learned? Did I need to connect up my iron mines? I mean, I guess that is something to learn, but boy, it's not a good lesson to learn, I guess. It's, uh, it sucks pretty darn hard. Right, well, at least it's a relatively easy reconnection. I, of course, am going to have to rush build this and rush build this, and that is going to set me back a good amount of money. However, I can actually do this with dollars, and I can also do this with dollars. Okay, so go do that. Right, wonderful. Well, that's just that's just fantastic, isn't it? Just fantastic. All right, build that with dollars as well. All right, so where does that leave me in terms of rubles? It leaves me very, very out of them. Le me, leaves me very, very with none. Right, so let's take out another, another bridging loan. Literally a bridging loan. Literally a bridging loan. Right, the next, the next question is, does my fire service reach all the way up here? It says no. It says no, but that seems like a fabrication. I feel like it should reach all the way up here. Like it very much should reach all the way up here. Am I gonna need to plonk down another fire station? I think I might need to plonk down another fire station. Yeah, I think that's probably the best, the best that I can do. Because, I mean, look, if I know anything, if I know anything and I don't know, I don't know much. I don't know much, but I do know that this game has a weird, a weird way of punishing me from not, uh, from not appropriately getting fire coverage for iron mines. Gosh darn it, that is so unbelievably irritating, isn't it? Okay. Build that. Build that. Excellent. And I'm going to see if I can just move all of these fire trucks out over here. There we go. Change depot. Change all the depots over here. And then, since that fire station is now no longer going to need to be staffed, we're going to see if we can try and get some cheeky walkways. I still believe strongly that walkways should be able to ascend pretty steep mountains. Yeah, I mean, look. That seems only fair, right? So what's the walking distance of, of this? I mean, it's not very far, to be honest. Is it worth me getting another another cableway from somewhere down here just up to the fire station? It does seem like a little bit of a colossal waste to me. Maybe even a bus station? I mean, if I was to do... I tell you what, I tell you what I'll do. I tell you what, we'll do something a little bit... Not not illegal, but we'll do something a little bit sneaky, right? So what we're going to do is we're going to set up a small bus platform over here. Or we're going to try our best to set up a small bus platform over here. Right? No. There must be, There must be space for one over here. Somewhere in this area, there's going to be space for a small bus platform. Really? There we go. Right in there. Okay, so brilliant. And then we'll see if that one's enough. Yep. Yeah. Orbital is fully on tilt by this by this point. So, you know, all measures of financial responsibility out the window. Don't tell me that's the iron mine again. Thank goodness. It's just gymnasium in Kolgradsky. Thank goodness. Fire truck is called and is headed to the area. Brilliant. Absolutely exceptional. Right, so the train station, are you able to walk to... You're not actually able to walk to the bus stop. Somewhat surprising. Right, no matter. Let's just bump up the walkway. Right, we'll make it 
substantially better. And I dare say that that might just increase the walking distance. It totally does. It increases the walking distance, and we're now able to walk to the bus platform. So we're going to add to the bus platform. Brilliant. 20% of people are going to go towards the bus platform. That's great. Are we able to walk directly from the bus platform to the fire station? No, not a problem. We'll get down another small bus platform. Over here should be perfectly adequate. Excellent. Excellent over there. Just like so. And everyone is going to go across that bus platform. And then everyone is going to go up to that fire station. Right. So what that means is that there should be... Yeah, I mean a decent number of people. Maybe we reduce the proportion slightly. We'll reduce it to 10%, but... That should be more than enough. And as soon as these people have got enough, uh, or had enough of just waiting around, so pretty much they'll wait for an hour. They'll wait for an entire hour on this platform, and then they'll head to the next specified location, which is the next bus platform. That's right, it sucks to be these folk, but, you know, since they, since they can't climb stairs, then this is the only way to get them around here. And then they're going to chill out on this platform for an hour, and then they're going to move up to here. And they're going to work at the fire station. Is the fire station even within range, in, within range, by the way? It totally is. It's totally within range, and it totally provides fire coverage for everywhere in Novoya Ironovsky, which is totally acceptable in my mind. All right, everyone is just timed out. That's brilliant. And we've got the next batch of workers coming in. So it takes a little while for all of the workers to filter up here. But, I mean, that seems to be... It seems to be working. And it now means that we're going to be able to provide fire cover to pretty much everywhere. Man, I am so irritated. I'm so unbelievably irritated that with that. That is, oh, that's just such garbage. Come on, video game. Why would you do this to me? Right, are we producing, are we producing oil now? I mean, we should be producing oil. Building is without a power supply. Okay, I mean, immediately as I come up here, that's it's not a good, not a good sign, to be honest, at all. That building's without a power supply. Why? That building's also without a power supply. Not a good sign. This building has a power supply, and this is exactly where the power is coming from, so... Why would there be no power over here? It does seem awfully like there should be a power connection over here. Are these two cables... Are these two cables not connected? Right. Now we've got a power supply. Funny that, eh? Uh, okay, so the next proof is going to be, do we have enough power? Do we have enough power in this area? Because we've got quite a lot of power coming through the cables. I know we can deal with 15 megawatts, but this deals basically with... I mean, it deals with the entirety of the oil pumping area, and it also deals with the entire side of the map, actually. We do have one more transmission point right down at the very bottom over here, but this transmission point is solely for export, which we are providing constantly. The rest of the power comes through that 15 megawatt cable that we were just chatting about right up there. So that's so that's fine. Yeah, but that should definitely lead to more oil output. Are we working? We are indeed working. Okay, let's have a little evaluation. You've got power. Now that is good news. It's very good news. Have you got power? You've not got power, and you've not got power, and you've not got power. Because, of course, I completely forgot that I was actually rudely interrupted. Rudely interrupted whilst I was trying to set up a power supply over here. Right, I think, to be honest, we just need to keep it nice and simple. Keep it nice and simple. We'll just get some cables out here. We're going to see if we can try and get a single electric substation down there. Which, of course, is going to be... Massive pain in the backside. We're going to have to create another little mini island in order to go out like this and then back over like that. And that should supply power to... There we go. That should supply power to those two engines over there, which I think should be fine. This one should already be powered here. Brilliant. Okay, let's get that built. Excellent. And so that just leaves a single pumping station over there. This one also has got power. That's okay. Alright, great. So that one can get its own bespoke cable, I guess. It's not the mine. It's a cinnamon Kolgradsky. Probably gonna be fine. 
See, I mean, you don't need to worry about it if it's just stuff in Potato Grad, Kogradsky, whatever. You don't need to worry about these things. Right, keep it coming. Keep it coming. So yeah, this is just going to be a direct connection right into... Building is in the way. Really? All right, we can do the double back trick on that. Uh, fine. All right, so now, as soon as we finish building this wire, we should immediately start to see the resources in... Yep, in the large oil wells just be completely depleted. Brilliant. We cannot store or export oil. Now that's a problem. Ah, it's because you haven't been built. All right, no worries. And there we go, just like that we are able to move a huge amount of oil. Let me take a little gander down to the bottom of the map, see what the situation is down here. We still haven't hooked this up yet, he says, but we should have hooked that up by now, right? Are we just taking oil out of it so quickly? Either way, look at this, look at this. We're gaining loads and loads and loads of oil. We cannot store or export bitumen. When it rains, it pours, folks. When it rains, it flippin' pours. Okay, start. Just go, okay? Just go. Get this train out on the move. Cinema at Kolgradsky has been extinguished. What is this? Pipe pumping station in Mini Constructo. Tell you what. It's a bloomin' good thing that I had a little look over here, eh? Because, as it turns out, this area is not connected to the road network. Which needs rectifying pretty much immediately. And in there, in there. Excellent. Excellent. Right. Fire truck, be dispatched. Good stuff. We should have no difficulties putting that fire out. There should be no interruption in service. Excellent. Wonderful. Good stuff. Very, 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 very pleased with that. Oh, man, if only we didn't have, like, a ridiculously large backlog of bitumen to clear through. Oh, man, that's so irritating. Right, well, is the train is the train back on the road again? It's as back on the road as a train can be, i.e. not very. All right, no matter. You're coming to load up here. You're going to take away hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of tons of bitumen. We are actually legitimately producing so much oil and so much fuel. It's just that we've got, you know... A huge need for fuel as well. Like, that's the crazy thing. Also, what the heck has gone wrong here? Oh, th okay, so this is a weird little thing for you. Turns out that this counts as the same connection over here, which is a little bit unrealistic, but whatever the case, we can get that rectified. Nice. You're loading up with bitumen, that's what we like to see. All right. And now we're, now we're making fuel again. Now we're making fuel again. Now we're making more bitumen. That's great. Is it enough? I mean, it seems to be, it seems to be like even with half of the oil wells turned on, seems to be making a pretty darn big difference from what it seems to me anyway. Whether that will transpire to be the trend to watch remains to be seen. Either way, very, very chuffed with how, uh, with how that entire area has come along. It's looking, it's looking real, real good. Looking real, real good. Uh, we got a lot of, we got a lot of stuff to move. We got a lot of stuff to move and a lot of traffic jams at the moment, but that is absolutely fine. We're 1988, by the way. It's quite a milestone. Quite a milestone. Are we drawing down on our supplies? This is what really is, is interesting to me. It kind of seems like we are. So it kind of seems like with this amount of oil production, we are just about, we're just about using them all. We've still got a bunch of other, a bunch of other pipe pumping stations to come online, a bunch of other oil stations to come online. You're operating without issues. You're operating without issues. You're operating without issues. Great. Obviously there is like room for expansion out here if we want to accept a slightly less optimal rate of oil. But that's okay. I'm going to get you sorted. I'm going to get you sorted as well. Excellent. I think everything should be pumping right now, to be honest. 
Right. I'm just gonna build a couple of these by myself, because I think, you know what? If we're in an oily sort of mood, we might as well continue that continue that trend, see if we can optimize a little bit for oil over the course of this episode. Excellent. And excellent. Good, 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 good. So lots of stored up production is going to be sent to the tanks straight away. That's really, really good. Uh, everything else is sort of... Sort of important. I kind of just want to get it done, to be honest. Let's just get it built, even though I know it's going to cost me a fair chunk of change. There is the added disadvantage with the fact that these buildings are really at the outer reaches of the construction office. And so it does take rather a long time for resources to get delivered. There we go. Okay, and so that leaves, what, a little tiny section over here that needs to be connected as well, which I'm also going to do, even at the expense of my financial financial competence. Let's do it. Sure, let's freaking go. And that, and that, and that. All right, and now I think we are officially out of money, and we're going to have to take out yet another bridging loan. Man, I tell you what, I the, the resurgence of bridging loans has been nothing short of exceptional. Nothing short of unbelievably on the edge of your seat. Interesting, no doubt. Nuclear fuel fabrication. Not a great plant to go on fire, but you know what? There's plenty of fire trucks over in that vicinity. Okay, so that is absolutely every oil well that we have built, connected. It's all it's all set up. The whole shebang. Do we have a fire station out here? No. No, we do not. No, we do not. The nearest fire station that we've got is the one in Mini Constructo. And dare I suggest that is absolutely inadequate for what we need? I suggest correctly. That is horrifically inadequate for what we need. Oh boy. Okay, well you know what? Since I'm in a fire a fire hazardy mood, is that is that a mood that people can have? I feel like I feel like it wasn't before this episode. Now a fiery hazard mood is definitely it's definitely the vibe that I'm feeling at this moment in time. Also anger. I'm feeling that vibe a heck of a lot. Right, so get that down. Let's make some not terrible roads. Where are you going? Where are you going? You're going to build something? I thought I'd built everything. Oh, no, I hadn't built anything. Uh, everything. All right, cool. Well, we can build that. Nice spot me. Right, so I'm going to get this upgraded to nice swanky road. I'm going to get this upgraded to nice swanky road. This upgraded to nice swanky road. This upgraded to swanky road. And then bring this down here. And that's connect up over there. Excellent. The reason why is that this is... It's very, very, very far away from everything. And therefore, in order to bust people out here, which I think should theoretically be possible, I'm going to need to make sure that the road is pretty much as fast as it possibly can be. Right, so... Need fire trucks and firefighters. A good point, well made. Right, so let's go back over here. Let's see if I can try and get, like, what... I need the fastest bus, actually. So if we sort by buses... 85 kilometers an hour, 100 kilometers an hour. The, R the IKR-256, I think, is probably what we're after. Yeah, it carries 45 passengers. Let's get six of these buses. That maybe is a little bit overkilly, but that's fine. Right, don't take any passengers. Don't take any... Any students, none of that nonsense. Literally right over there to the fire station. Head back over here, copy the workflow. And get started. Right. I'm nervous. I'm nervous about this, because if this doesn't work, then we're undoubtedly going to see a fire occurring fairly soon. Uh, right, so where are you going to be able to reach? You're going to be able to reach all the way over here. Now, that actually presents somewhat of a problem, because there is technically a little bit of a blind spot. Technically a little bit of a blind spot in here. Where 
our fire trucks from the island don't actually reach this middle area. Right. I mean, that is far from ideal. Far, far, far from ideal. Is there a way to rectify it? Maybe. I think the way that we're going to fix it is probably with another... Where are we? Okay. That should be fine. Uh, we're probably going to fix it with another fire station. I don't like sticking fire stations down every two meters. But I guess this is probably something that we just need to do. We probably don't need to put that many buses to serve this fire station. But, you know, then again, it only takes two seconds for a fire to go horrifically wrong. All it takes is a little bit of a little bit of a blip in my attention and bada bim bada boom, suddenly three iron mines are on fire, you know? That's what's terrible. Two fire trucks seems absolutely adequate. And what do you know, let's get two buses as well. Ah, let's get three buses. I'm feeling slightly generous. No guarantee that the numbers are gonna be suitable. We might be overemploying, we might be underemploying firefighters. I just don't know. I don't know, and frankly, it doesn't really matter. As long as we just have like a couple of people working at the fire station, then that's totally fine. Right, do we have enough do we have enough workers coming to the coming to the bus stop? The answer to that is no. We do not. Tell you what I'm gonna do as a compromise. I don't know why I said compromise, because it's absolutely not a compromise. We're going to stick down a bit of housing over here, which is quite fun, right? Everyone loves a bit of housing. Uh, yeah, sure. Okay, we'll get that down. And then we will set up a lovely walkway between here and there. And that should do for walkways throughout the town. Yeah, sure, let's get that set up over there. Excellent. Right, so that should lead to slightly more people working in this area. At the moment, I don't think... I don't think they're able to reach the bus stop. The bus stop is not within walking distance, unfortunately. It's very close to being within walking distance, though, so if I was able to just tweak this footpath just a smidgen... There we go. Tighten that corner up a little bit. There we go. If I was to do that, would that end up increasing the walking distance to the... No. No, it wouldn't. It's pretty darn close, though. Tell you what. Let's speed this up. Right. And if we make some slightly faster roads. Are we able to now reach the bus stop? No, we're still not able to reach the bus stop. That's an absolute travesty. An absolute travesty. Okay, next question. If I was connect up footpaths from the back of the houses, that would probably fix it, right? That's already connected there. That would definitely fix it. Nope. Okay, that still doesn't definitely fix it. I mean, that's pretty irritating, actually. Uh, it's really irritating. That is really, really irritating. What about... Okay, next experiment. See if we can try and get a footpath through here. Nope. Definitely a footpath through here. This must... This must make it work. Okay. Okay. Hey, fantastic. It's not even that long of a route. Fantastic. That is great. 300, and me 300 meters and 292. Fantastic. 150 people waiting at that bus stop, ready to get picked up and taken to be brave firefighters. You'll love to see it. Wowzers. I, I still cannot believe that I exist in a world where this is something that we have to do. But you know what? Now we have 100% fire protection pretty much everywhere. Pretty much ever. I mean, look at this. Look at this. Look at the size of this network. I mean, that is something to be proud of. Right, so, just going back and checking on the oil situation. What is the oil situation? The oil situation is very, very good. I am very, very happy with that. Very, very happy with that. Look at the amount of oil that we've got. Holy cow, that's brilliant. 
Okay, so that should mean continuous chemical production, without a shadow of a doubt. We've, in fact, got hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of tons of chemicals, which is somewhat of a problem, in a sense, because we probably don't have enough chemicals being transported across to the other side of the map. Dare I say, no, we don't, because we've got a boat full of steel. Now, that is an issue. However, I think I can rectify that issue if we build a Frida, or even if I was to re-acquisition one of these Volgobalts, in fact. They've both got about 100 tons of steel on them. Okay, what I'm going to do, I'm going to send you to the border, and then after you've gone to the border, I'm going to get you to do solely chemical deliveries. I don't really want you to do solely chemical deliveries, though. I kind of want... I want a fast boat. I want a fast boat who can take a decent amount of chemicals from one side of the map to the other. Because this is pretty inadequate at this moment in time. Is there any is there any boat that really fits the fits the need that I'm after? I mean the Frida, obviously. Do I want to just buy a Frida? Not particularly. I think I might though. I think I might just to ensure that we're always able to move chemicals. Because it's pretty darn important that we actually have the chemicals being moved from one side of the map to the other. Right, so first things first, let's get you to move right across to here. Yep, we're going to wait until loaded chemicals 100%, plastics 100%, it's fine. And then we're going to come all the way back across here and we're going to unload, wait until unload chemicals and plastics. Now, that is also going to mean, that is also going to mean that we're going to need to reconfigure the other Frida. What the heck are you doing? What a funky route to take. Uh, this, this boat is going to be reconfigured to pretty much only take steel, bricks, uh, wood, and boards and whatnot. I've got an idea about how I want to handle this. What do we need over here? This is something. This is prefab panels. Okay, I've got an idea about how I want to handle this. So, you're going to go to Kobe Harbor. You're going to unload. You're going to unload. You're not actually going to load anything on here. You're going to unload 100%. You're not going to wait until unloaded. Then you're going to go back to Shipsky. Right? You're going to go back to Shipsky. And you're going to unload as much of this stuff as you can. So, just unload everything. So... Unload bricks, boards, prefab panels, the whole shebang. And then you're going to load up to 100% with... I've I've had varying ideas on how we handle this. Like, maybe I just get... I guess the end game scenario is that we have one ship which deals with prefab panels, one ship which deals with steel, one ship which deals with bricks, one, one ship which deals with boards. But for now, we'll just leave it like this. But do know that this will change. As soon as we're done building this Vogelbalt, I think I'm going to see if I can try and build, like, whatever it is, three more Fridas. And that will allow us to move resources slightly more effectively. Because we are out of prefab panels at this moment in time. And that's not a good sign. In fact, I'm going to just build the rest of that flat. Because otherwise, we'd be waiting there for, uh, for ages. 40 people still living at home with their parents. That's totally fine. It's a number that I can very easily get under control. Look at this. We're starting to backlog in the big oil storage tank. Oh, that's so good. That's so good. That is absolutely great. And it looks like the power is, for the most part, holding pretty strong. Which is really, really good news. Did you load up? What are you doing? Oh, no, yes. You shouldn't be loading up anymore. It's the other boat that's going to be loading up. And here you come right now. Excellent. Well, that's just exactly what we like to see. Well, I'm very, very happy with this. We still need to sort out our export program so that we're able to export plastics. Because uh, at the moment, we're just, wait we're just wasting a whole bunch of plastic production, really. Look at this. We cannot store or export plastics. And we're getting to that point with chemicals as well. And that is, um, that is not good. That is, that is not good at all. That is not good at all. I tell you what we could do. I tell you what we could do. So you do chemical transport, don't you? All right. We're going to do another classic orbital potato thing. 
we're gonna build yet another medium distribution office right over here. Right? We're gonna build this, and we're gonna spend a whole heap of money on stuff, always, as we always do. A whole heap of money on vehicles. Alrighty, so get that built. Then give me a whole bunch of covered hull trucks. Ideally, the Maz land train things. There we go, look at that. That was literally about a million rubles. Uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna draw from here, and I'm gonna say, if the storage percentage is above 60, 50%, then take chemicals and plastics, and we're gonna just drive them right up to the border, and we're just gonna sell them right there. So rather than taking the resources all the way back across to Potato Grad, then taking them all the way back to Shipsky, and then exporting them on a boat, Instead, we're just gonna do we're just gonna do this. It's not gonna make a massive difference. It's just gonna mean that we're gonna you know we're gonna have more sort of trucks energized, picking up chemicals, taking them across to this warehouse, then having them shipped to the border, etc., etc., etc. You know, the thing to note is that the Frida is is always gonna be 100% loaded uh, at you know at this harbor because it's gonna wait. It's forced to wait until it's 100% loaded with uh, with either plastics. Or chemicals, which is very, very cool indeed. Yep, so pretty darn happy with that. Right, and then as soon as you are in here, you should start loading. And that's going to kick everyone else into gear as well, which is great. So it means that the resources that are going across to Potato Grad are just ones that can 100% be used for... be used for the production of uranium and the like. I don't even know how uranium production is is going. It's probably not going very great. Yeah, we're missing chemicals. It's not very good. We've got a significant backlog of uranium in both of the nuclear facilities, though. It's just the uranium for export that has not really happened in a little while, but I guess that's kind of okay. We're missing coal. I mean, that's never good. The fact that there are no trains over here, this is also never good. What's going on? What's going on here? Why are we not... What's the issue? Why are there problems here? Why is everything backed up? Ah! What are you doing here, exactly? What are you doing? Are you... What? What are you doing here? Why would you come in this way? I mean, that makes little to no sense. Also makes... Makes slightly more sense that you're here. Right, well, this is a... Unique situation, for sure. Also, why are we not filling up these trains? Like, I thought we were... I thought we were in a good place when it came to... The amount of iron that we were processing. No workers? Oh! Yeah, here's a, that's a thing that we didn't do. All right, well, it turns out that there is a, uh, a missing connection over here. Just fantastic. Just, so this whole time we haven't been, we haven't been producing iron over there? Oh, that's just, that's just great. That's just great. That's just great. That's what a fire does to you. That is what a fire does to you. Oh, it, it oh, it's just, my brain, my brain is just not, it, it's just not, <laughs> I'm super tilted. I'm super duper tilted. All right, well, you know what? Let's just get you guys to, to go. There we go. You go, and you go. We'll free up a little bit of space here, and then we should be able to restart that. So this entire time, we've not been making steel? Oh, that's great. That's just that's just fantastic. You love to see it. You love to see it, folks. Uh, how are we doing with regards to meat production? Not great, actually, in terms of meat production. There's a little bit that needs to be amended. We need to try a little bit harder to get on top of our meat production. However, clothing production, clothing production is going great. Yeah, I'm, I'm chuffed with clothes. That's, that's looking real good. It's looking real good. And actually, if we have a little look at our imports, our imports are actually pretty, pretty down. If I have a little look at clothes this year, clothes doesn't exist. Food is lowering. Alcohol is also trending downwards as well. Again, there's still all of that stuff on the Kobe side, the you know, the mini constructo side that needs to be dealt with, but, you know, that's kind of by the by. It's not super huge priority. Not at this moment in time. I tell you what, though, it is good that we've got this bespoke train delivery network. 
uh, people delivery network via trains. Yeah, sure. These trains, these trains are great. They're really, really cool. They're making a, a big difference. Really, really big difference. All right, and I can't believe it. I can't believe it this whole darn time. This whole darn time. It it really it really does blow my mind how I uh, how I didn't manage to get that path all the way up at the top sorted. Goodness gracious me. Yeah, but this is not looking too bad. We're missing a little bit of livestock, but you know we seem to be backlogging livestock whenever we've got the opportunity, and it seems like there's enough employees here. Just potentially that crops are a little bit low. But again, you know, that's not necessarily the end of the world. I think we can just about deal with that. It might even be worth us getting, like, direct crop deliveries into the livestock farm. In fact, we could just... We could just do that. So you, at the moment, load up grain from those fields. Sure. Get that over there. Load up grain from the Grainsky storage. Load if it's above 10%. Sure. So as long as you've got like more than 10% grain there, we will see if we can try and deliver to the livestock farm. That's kind of cool, right? It's very cool. Very, very cool indeed. Also, we need to try and get some upgraded tractors to all of these farms. Not like it particularly matters, but we are... We are going through quite a lot of grain here. 103 tons. Well, that's not good. That's really not good. That is really, really not good. All right, let me quickly just build a storage distribution center thing. Right over there. Excellent. Wow, what an eclectic episode, eh? First of all, we started... Yeah, tighten that up. First of all, we started over in uh, the new iron processing area in order to build the largest bridge that has ever been seen in the history of bridges. I still can't quite believe that it was real. Is real, I should say. It's haunting the specter of my present. Haunting the specter of my present. It is the haunting specter of my present? Sure. Let's let's go with that. Right, bang, 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 bang. Uh do we have a nope, we don't have that over there. Cool. Building's already assigned to another distribution office. That's fine. We can have more than one distribution office. Building's already assigned to another distribution office. Yep. 800 crops. 800 crops. 800 crops, folks. What about over here? 900 crops. It's just... That's embarrassingly large. There is definitely two fields under here, by the way. I don't understand how it how it happened, but it did. Building's already assigned. There's a fire over there somewhere, but we'll find out in just a second. Cool. All right, unload there. Excellent. Grain ski grain storage. Unload if the storage is below 90. Yeah, excellent. I'm actually pretty chuffed with that. Pretty darn chuffed with that. Absolutely. And this one over here, you can also unload over there. Do we want to get you to unload anywhere else? I guess you can unload over there too. Cool. All right, so now we should be able to... Now we should be able to deliver more crops over to the grain storage, which is quite nice. I probably should have set that differently, actually. Yeah. Grainsky grain storage. Do we cover... Does it automatically... Does it automatically get us... Does it automatically connect to the distribution office? Because that's actually where I want to go. Grainsky grain storage shouldn't be there. It should actually be the distribution office. Yeah, so I'm going to say load and unload. Unload if the storage percent is below 90 load if the storage percent is above 10. Sure. And then similarly, for this mess of an office, we need to redo that as well. Completely forgot that we actually have, you know, had the foresight to set up a cargo station here. 
Right, so that's just on unload there. Unload if it's less than 90. Brilliant. And it should always be less than 90. And if it's not less than 90, well, then, you know, things are great. If it's above 90, things are very, very good indeed. Right, the fact that we've got these land trains should theoretically mean that all of the crops that we've got waiting here for pickup should mean that they're all taken off the field with relative ease. 1,100 tons of crops. Wow. That's, that's exceptional. That's truly embarrassing. 1,200 tons of crops. I feel like every second field that I click on, there's just a worse story. That is, that is not good. That's not what you like to see. I mean, that just... That's bad. It's hugely bad. But now that we've got the Mazes on the job, they should make uh, they should make short work of it. Yeah, absolutely. That's really, really good. And it should mean that we just have that little bit extra sort of crop delivery happening over in the industrial area. That's cool. I like that a lot. Food production, I suspect, is probably still reasonably consistently high. Yeah, I mean, look at how much food we've got. We've actually got a little bit of an overproduction of food at this moment in time. It's not necessarily a problem. It's a good thing to have. Good little backup, little buffer in place there. But, you know, just something to, to bear in mind. Not super ideal, uh, given the circumstances. Holy cow. Holy cow, what an episode. I'm still legitimately still tilted by the fact that I had to build this bridge and then it was all for nothing. Uh, I am actually still, I'm actually still irritated. <laughs> <laughs> it's just one of these just one of these things um, but anyway yeah you know look this is this is a great time to check out the brand new nuclear update if you haven't checked it out already uh, certainly this workers and resources soviet republic series is going fantastic everything is going great uh, we're now you know fully backlogged and fully backed up in terms of oil production which is really really great very very happy with that indeed the next episode, I've got something real special planned, so I uh, do indeed hope you tune in then. Um, I also should have mentioned, I also should have mentioned that, what was I going to do? Ah, yes, I was going to give you a little checkup on the status of the bridge. It's fine. It's coming along 50% through the second section of that bridge over there. And also the tunnel. The tunnel is actually probably creeping towards, yeah, it's creeping towards and has just passed 91%. Holy cow, folks. It's happening. It's actually legitimately happening. Anyway, tune in to the next episode. I've got a fantastic, uh, a fantastic little uh, little thing planned. So I hope to see you then. Um, take a look at all of these fantastic people right now. The Orbital Potato Incorporated Patreon supporters. Also, the code word. That's right. We got a code word. I'm gonna say the code word for this episode. For this episode is that darn path. That's right. That darn path right at the top of the right at the top of the world really caused me so much frustration. It's it's kind of not even funny. Uh, but there you go. That darn path is the is the code word. Uh, thanks as ever to the fantastic Patreon supporters, as I've already highlighted. Also also thank you to Banana Nanana and C Senpai for being the two twenty five dollar plus patrons over at Patreon.com forward slash over potato. As I say, folks, tune into the next episode. You're not going to want to miss it. It's going to be fantastic. I'll see you then. Bye.